Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Roleplaying Guys Season 4. This is a character creation episode courtesy of Nick Totten. As you already know, Tyler and Brianna got married this past weekend, so they were busy doing other stuff. Uh, good for them. This episode is going to be a little bit different because it's just going to be Nick, and he will take you through the entire character creation process from archetype all the way to appearance of one of our favorite NPCs from Season 1, Captain Bolty. It works best if you already have a character sheet open to follow along to understand exactly what he's doing as he does it. It's also different because it is the first recording that Nick has done with his new mic. Thank you to Jules and Brad for getting him a new mic, essentially. It's because of you guys that he got one. I have also included in this episode an episode note from the episode 6 that was released last week. I forgot to include it, so I'm including it in this one. Please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and YouTube. We have pages on all of those wonderful websites. We also have our own website called RollPG13.com. Ty posts all the homebrew content that he makes up there, so it is a great website with a crap ton of resources that you can use for any one of your campaigns if you are running a system or a campaign in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, Pathfinder, or even Numenera. He's doing a lot of stuff all the time, so there's a lot of new stuff constantly going up there. He's also got a few different apps that he's working on, I believe, so it's a pretty interactive website. And you can check out our old episodes there, too. Speaking of episodes, please rate us wherever you get your podcasts. We do our best to create fun podcasts and awesome content for you all. Please do a solid for us and rate us. And also recommend us to your friends, your pets, your enemies, your furries, lords, poets, and sailors. Really, anybody who you come in contact with. I don't really know the demographic that we're reaching here. So you guys just reach out and... Uh, do your best to advertise us if you wouldn't mind thank you also to our patreon donors jules and brad you are the gravitational pull that guides us in our space voyage without you we could not do this as a side note we are also including a song that jules wrote for our podcast she wrote this and it is completely 100 percent original so stick around at the end of the episode and you will listen to her awesome uh, her awesome brainchild. I mean, I, this is pretty incredible. She, you might think that you've heard something like it in the past, or it might ring true to your memories of the early 2000s, late 90s, but I assure you, this is 100% Jules. The Role Playing Guys is a proud member of the Necropodicon Podcast Network. Check out the awesome other shows on the network, things like The Gigantic Adventures of Jeff and Simon, Shivers, Yikes, Murder and Stuff. Those are just three of the many other shows that are on the network that are also awesome thank you guys so much for listening to us and supporting us and for recommending us to your friends families furries and all the other people that you come in contact with i wanted to keep with the f alliteration so i went with furries i'm not sure if uh many furries listen to our podcast but if you do recommend us to your other furry friends anyway let's get to the episode an anomaly manifests Nimue and Merlin dispatch the Night Watch. The heroes eliminate the so-called threat. Mission accomplished. I'm curious. Do they truly believe they're making a difference in the world? It seems they believe so. However, I can say they really aren't making that much of a difference at all. Hello everyone, this is Nick from the Role Playing Guys, and uh, well, if you haven't heard already, Tyler and Brianna are getting married very soon, like this week. And so that's very exciting, I very much look forward to attending the, the reception and everything. Very, very exciting, very happy for them. That also means, however, that we will, well, they're going to be busy with, you know, getting married, honeymoon, all that stuff. So that mean, uh, that means that we won't be able to record uh, regular sessions for regular episodes for the next week or so, or maybe maybe two weeks. Yeah, we won't be able to record regular episodes for the next probably two weeks. I I would say I think Ty uh, Spencer also has some stuff going on with like moving and whatever. So so th so that's going on. We're taking a little bit of a break because of life events happening. We still want to make some content though. Spencer and I have been talking a bit, and we definitely. We have a couple of fun experimental ideas, and one of them is this one. Well, what I'm what I'm going to do this time. 
I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to call this incorporated. Like, I'm going to inc- like incorporate a character from a previous season and corporeize them, essentially. This, uh, this has a dual purpose of showing you the, the nitty gritty of the, of the character creation process of corporea, as well as hopefully being fun and seeing how, um, I would interpret, um, one of our, one of our previous, um, uh, a character from a previous season. If the, if our seasons were longer, like if I had more time to make a, a larger campaign and especially longer time with more episodes, I certainly would incorporate or incorporate <laughs> more, more characters from previous seasons into our, into this season. But there isn't a whole lot of room. So uh, I'm going to do this. And so today I'm going to see what I can do to incorporate Captain Bolty. All right. So um, I very much remember Captain Bolty back in season one. Um, I was just a guest in that season. But still, it was a lot of fun to uh, kind of talk with basically robot, essentially, but like the D&D version of a robot. It's called a Modron. Or a, mon- uh, a Modron, basically, is what it's called. Um, Captain Bolty was a spherical, um, one-eyed construct that spoke like a robot and was, the, was kind of like the automated captain, in a sense, of this... Mind Flayer ship and everything. If you're familiar with Monsters Incorporated, think Mike Wazowski, but a robot, first of all. And then, uh, like a captain's hat. I think I imagined him with a mustache and like a little rapier and stuff. Uh, really, really awesome. So I'm going to see, so Captain Bolthy is going to be a fa- fairly different, um, in Corporea, the way I'm going to try to inc- incorporate him, but I'm going to do what I can. All right, I'm going to go through the character creation process. What if I wanted to take Captain Bolty and make him a player character in Corporea? So uh, the first thing I want to do is pick an archetype. There are lots of different archetypes. These are basically your classes. Um, I'll briefly list all, all of them here. Of them, we've got so badge, which is basically a security officer. We've got a hacker. We've got a headhunter, which is basically like an assassin or a bodyguard. A journo is the term for journalist or an investigator. Knight Errant is what um, Rebecca's character, L is. Um, a reincarnated knight from, from the Court of Camelot. Although, you don't have to be a Knight Errant to be a reincarnated um, character. Just look at Br- um, Brianna's character. I almost said Britta's character. Brianna's character, Britta. Um, but Knight Errant means that you are specifically a... You were a knight from Camelot, and you are reincarnated with those particular skills. A Lister is... Or is a celebrity. That's what Brianna's character, Britta, is. Radical, it's just kind of like a someone who rejects the corporate powers of, of the of the world of the world. Runner, that's partly what Tyler's character Scotty is. Runner is basically if you've heard of the video game Mirror's Edge, perhaps, or something like that. Parkour messenger deliverer delivery person, basically. Sorcerer is the other side of um, Tyler's character. A spellcaster with an affinity for futurism and modern life, a technomancer. A suit is the term for a corporate manager, someone wearing a suit, a white-collar job, uh, one who can navigate red tape very well. Then there's the thinker, which uh, they're intellectual, devoted to knowledge and research. So think of what Iron Man is, Tony Stark, I guess. He would be a thinker, you know, scientists, um, you know, engineering technology, that kind of thing. A witcher is the other kind of spellcaster, which is... Um, Basically, they have an affinity for nature. They focus on the natural and the archaic. Sorcerers use plastic wands. Witchers use wooden wands, essentially. Sorcerers are uh, hipsters. Witchers are hippies. And then Zero, that is what Spencer's character is. Basically an everyman, a blue-collar worker. Those are all the basic archetypes in in Corporea. You can choose any one of them. You can even combine two of them if you want, with only with a few exceptions. Knight, Errant, Sorcerer, and Witcher can't be combined with another special archetype like that so you can't be a knight errant and a sorcerer at the same time you can't be a sorcerer and a witcher at the same time but you can be a knight errant and a journo or a witcher and a suit that kind of thing the, i also have an expansion as well there are lots of new archetypes and i'm going to be using one of these new archetypes for captain bolty because it just suits him better <laughs> suits him better the new archetypes include drone which is the convicted criminal forced to work to um to pay off a corporate debt a juvie, which is like a bullied teenager with some fluxed powers. A squire, which is partly what Rebecca's character is. 
think um, Sheldon Cooper, or a nerd of some kind, a, a sci-fi, a fantasy nerd eager to join the Arthurian cause. Like, oh my gosh, I've read all about this stuff. I, it's real? What? Then there's Elite, which are idle, rich, celebutants, socialites with a taste for the supernatural. Like, I got time. I got money. Maybe I'll help out. A Fringer is kind of the opposite. Homeless, working odd jobs, off the grid, living on the fringes of society. A Muppet is an even younger juvie. So if a juvie is a high school, like, you know, Stephen King Carey sort of character, a, uh, a Muppet is a uh, child prodigy, basically. We're talking like ages six to seven. Uh, a rev is short for reverend. Well, it's just any religious leader of any religion um, sworn to fight the forces of chaos. And then finally, there's spook, which is patriotic operatives of a weak, uh, decrepit federal government. They're called spooks because they work in a um, in a division, a government division with the acronym of FEAR, F-E-A-R. So anyway, um, but there are three special archetypes in the expansions. Um, one is outcast, fiends exiled from their di- from their dimension, now living among humanity. The Risen, which is a, basically, you're of an undead. Like, the, the Risen archetype is for those player characters who have died, but who want to, like, come back. And generally, it's only available if your first PC dies or whatever. If, if you want to make exceptions, if the director, the GM, wants to make exceptions, you certainly can. Now, here's what I'm going to use for Captain Bolte. I'm going to use the Sim special archetype. Artificial humans, powered by science and magic. So in Corporea, in this uh, very futuristic society, there certainly were um, like androids, um, helping robots, that kind of thing. But because of the flux, this chaotic magical energy kind of permeating the, the uh, permeating everything, some artificial intelligences and robots become sentient, become more intelligent. And they kind of come into their own, essentially. So that's just, that's basically what the sim is going to be. Uh, that is the archetype I'm going to choose. Once you choose an archetype, or two archetypes if you want to do that, you select personality traits. Um, each character should have four traits, three public and one private. The character sheet looks very much like a um, form, uh, like a W-2 form. It's called Form V9, Employee Data Verification. But anyway, yeah, archetype, sim, and then, oh yeah, the name, the name of this character. So I'm I'm not going to make it super obvious. I'm going to make the, the name in the surname, first name section, I'm going to write C4P7-80L7Y, also known as Captain Bolty, because C4P7-80L7Y, that is like leet speak for Captain Bolty. Or maybe just Bolty for short. I think I'll just do Bolty for short. Captain Bolty seems like a, like a bit much. But Bolty would probably choose that name for himself when he kind of gains some sentience. So personality traits. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, three public and one private. Uh, there are some mechanical uses, like uh, flux points and stuff, and we would use more of those if the campaign was longer. But you can choose any any kinds of traits, whatever you want. Um, public traits can, are, they're generally known to family, friends, and coworkers. Let's see. I think, uh, Captain Bolty, or uh, Bolty, I'll, I'll just say Bolty, is generally, he's, um, he's, he's dependable. People would say he's, he's dependable. Let's see. How was, let's see, how was he in season one? Like he, he always, he was, if he's knowledgeable. And then, so yeah, he always had all this information and was always wanted to be like helpful, um, dependable. I think he was also like generally obedient. That's kind of more independable though. I'll just say helpful. If I had more time, I'd probably think of better terms than these kind of admittedly sort of generic ones. But other examples include easily distracted, headstrong, patient, skeptical, superficial, that kind of thing. Uh, witty. So private, um, traits. Um, these are kind of like hidden secrets, phobias, or goals. So addict, gambling problem, reincarnated as opposite gender, wants vengeance, formerly fat, in debt. That kind of thing. Something that uh, maybe your character doesn't quite want people to know. So, I th- hmm, what what would Bolty... Previously, Captain Bolty was, like, he served Mind Flayers, although that didn't seem to be a form of shame to him. Shame to him. That was just kind of, like, his function. Maybe, like, he's, uh, like, loyal to a fault, perhaps? Like, he gained sentience. He has a will of his own, but maybe he's just, like, too helpful. Like, he's, he's, uh, he's dependable and knowledgeable and helpful, like... Uh, to a fault. Is that like a hidden secret though? Um, I don't know if it is. How about this? He wants to be 
his own boss. He wants to be a manager. He wants to be his own captain, as it were. Like, he can do what he wants, but uh, maybe it's, it's not quite clear to him that he really can do whatever he wants. He has spent pretty much all of his all of his waking life up until this point, all of his online life up until this point, um, following orders, doing what his master asked of him. Maybe maybe he was a like some sort of a artificial intelligence um, in, in a robot form that was that served Valiant, or maybe he changed hands and ended up in Valiant. And then I guess associating with so many other like fluxed. Uh, Fluxed creatures and humans and whatever, um, he gains sentience. So these are these are traits. Um, what is very important though is choosing your core competency. So you have three options: you can either be touched, gifted, or fluxed. But in any case, um, touched, fluxed, touched, gifted, and fluxed that gives you a, a different allocation of points for your core values, for your skills, and your assets. Well, he certainly is actually touched by the flux; otherwise, he wouldn't gain sentience. What am I thinking? Um, gifted and fluxed, definitely not. Gifted and fluxed gives you more, like, points for supernatural assets, like, um, doing magic The most is the most notable example. I don't think Bol- uh, Bolti can do that. So, I'm going to say he's, uh, touched by the flux. That gives me 14 points for core values. That gives me 20 points for skills and 10 points for general assets. Defining the core values is next. So this is basically your stats, like in D&D. So we have strength, deftness, or if you want to say dexterity. Metal is your constitution or your endurance. Um, your knowledge, your wit, which is your intuition, your persuasive abilities, and magic. So um, no core value can be less than one or more than four. Magic is obviously going to be one. Um, uh, Bolti as a sim, as a robot, basically, is not going to have gifts in, or knowledge or strength in magic, really. Um, there's a, a suggested build for each of these archetypes. Let me look at the quick build here. Okay, so generally, yeah, that makes sense. So strength, metal, and knowledge is what's generally suggested. Um, and that would make sense to me, I think. Um, a robot would, uh, Bolti would be stronger, I think. Um, more knowledgeable and would have a, st- a stronger constitution than, um, humans would in general. So let's see, if I already have one in magic... Nothing, it can't be more than four. So I think I'm going to do four in strength, um, four in metal, and four in knowledge. There's 12, 13. Oh dear. Um, I need, um, I still have deafness and wit. I need to, I only have one point left though. So I'm going to need to reduce one of these. I mean, he's, he's not the strongest robot. I'm going to give him a strength of three. So that he has, actually, do I want to give him like more wit, like influence? No, no, I think it's just more knowledge. So let's see, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It gives me two more points. One more point in wit and one more point in deafness. There we go. I like that. So yeah, that's the core core values. And now we're moving on to skills. So there are skills associated with each core value. Um, for strength, we got fisticuffs and, fisticuffs and getting medieval, which is melee weapons. Deafness, we have athletics and firearms. Metal, we have valor. Like uh, how well you're able to kind of like Keep your cool, especially like when there's horrifying creatures in front of you. Um, for knowledge, we have like business, knowledge in crime, knowledge in the humanities and sciences. And there's humanities and sciences each have their own sub-disciplines as well. For wit, we have influence and instinct. And magic, we have sorcery and witchcraft. There's four dis- sub-disciplines in, in each of those as well. So we have 20 points to give to skills. Um, no skill can be greater than one point above the associated core value. So, Bolthy has a strength score of three. So, if, if I wanted to give, if I wanted to make his fisticuffs as strong as possible, I can't make it any higher than four. Why don't we go ahead and do that? Four in fisticuffs. I'm going to put a bunch in knowledge, I think. Hmm. I'm going to put two points in business, um, knowledge of business, maybe one point in crime, just kind of knowing stuff about it. Humanities, let's see. Um, he was never like an artsy kind of character. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to put anything in humanities for like antiques, arts, history, language, music, or religion. More in the sciences though. I think I'll do two in computers. That's nine. Two in mechanical. That's 11. Two in medicine. That's 13. Influence and instinct. I'd like to give him a little more in influence. So uh, influence is influence and instinct are both used a fair a fair amount. Instinct uh, helps your 
Uh, it's part of your initiative rolls for combat. And then influence is like any time you need to persuade or deceive or things like that. I'll put two in influence and two in instinct. That's uh, 15 points I've used already. He'll have some, no- he'll have some skill in, in firearms. Um, two more points in that. That's 17. And actually, I'm going to give another point to crime. That's 18. Mechanical, I'm going to actually raise that from 2 to 4, um, making it 20. Right? That's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22. Oh, gosh. Mm, never mind. It stays at 2. We don't have 22 points. So that's skills. Determine flux points. So, again, if we had a longer campaign, I would use flux points more often. This is kind of like, kind of almost like story points. There's a give and take system. The formula for t- determining flux points are FP. Now I think of it as flower points because I'm a Paper Mario fan. Um, so it's knowledge plus wit plus magic. So for Captain Bolty, sorry, for Bolty, knowledge is four, wit is one, magic is one. So he has six flux points. And now we get to determine an asset. So assets are like all the special abilities your character has. And um, being touched by the flux, you have 10 asset points. And so I'm going to look at the quick build suggestions again. The quick build suggestions for a sim, by the way, I didn't look at this before, but firearms and sciences. Yep, I kind of did that already. Now for assets, each archetype has one asset that is cheaper for them specifically. So I'm going to look at this, the one for uh, sim first, which is sustained. Stained, that basically means... The flux affected your body's natural homeostasis to such a degree you do not need to eat, sleep, or even breathe. You can if you desire, and magical spells may still force you to do so. Um, It's free for sims because, uh, well, robots don't need to eat, sleep, or breathe. So there's that. (laughs) But yeah, there's there's lots of assets you can choose from. Again, uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. This is already uh, being long enough as it is. But let's see here. Where is the assets? Here we go. Okay, so not going to have any supernatural assets, not at all. Not, none of this uh, special, well, I mean, hacking does, rec- like, there's a special hacking asset. Not hacking specifically, but, like, kind of a hacking superpower, if you will. But that does not quite apply here. Let me see, I'm just kind of looking through. Um, actually, maybe ha- maybe hack might be good. That is five points, though. That's half of his asset points. Grant's ability to hack electronic systems by way of knowledge plus sciences computer checks. I mean, his knowledge plus sciences, which is four plus two, is six. That's pretty good. That's a that's a contender for sure. I want to try to see if I can find something that fits um, Bolty's personality, I guess. Kind of a quirky... Ooh, Lady Luck is always fun. One free reroll per session. That could, that could be something. Null, prudent... Uh, weapon master, star power. Uh, <laughs> some assets in here include like funding, like you have more money, or a safe house, like you have a, a place to stay. I don't think we're gonna do that. Ooh, could you have a network maybe? Or, ooh, okay, this could be good. You seek knowledge or spiritual essence as nourishment to the soul, plus one bonus to humanities or science checks. I like Quester, that's two points. So if we do hacker and Quester, that's seven. And what else? Street Fighter, mm, I don't quite see that in, in Bolty. Null, now that is, that's a good one, I think. Might be good for Bolty. Sacrifice your magic value to increase other values. Take your starting magic value, redistribute them to your other core values. This will make your magic value a zero, which means you're invisible to magical scrying or tracking and immune to penalties from cursed relics, but you can't use magic to resist or cast spells or gain any bonuses from relics. So he'd be more vulnerable to magic. I mean, to like magical damage, I suppose. But that would be one point. If we do that, that would be eight points total. You know what? Influential, I think. Um, Bolty is a nice, he's a nice character. I think we're going to do that. Okay, so um, we're spending five points for hack. We're going to spend two points for influential. And then we're going to do one point for null, which means that the one point we got from magic is going to be taken to something else. I think I'm going to bring it to strength. I wanted strength to be four. So that, you know, uh, kind of a hardy for a robot body. And magic is now zero. And then finally, quester. And obviously we're going to do plus one bonus to science checks. Biology, chemistry, physics, and psychology. I didn't put points in any of those, but now it's plus one. And now computer, mechanical, and medicine are plus three each. So really cool. Good, good. That is assets. 
And now we're getting into things that would probably even take more time as you, uh, you know, explore the options you have. Choose weapons and equipment, and then finally uh, determine rep points. So weapons and equipment. And so at the start of each mission, each member of the Night Watch is provided with a standard loadout. It can be like a pistol, an additional weapon, shield and or suit of armor, that kind of thing. And then members of the Night Watch get, uh, in addition to this, you also get a monthly salary of $10,000 or other available capital. And I mean, obviously the director, the GM, can can do as they will with this kind of thing. But I, I'm sticking with the uh, the corporea rules here. What kind of uh, weapons or augments or assets, w- well, not assets, but like uh, weapons or something would Bolty have? I guess I did kind of make him more into like a fisticuffs kind of a, a thing. I could have given more given him more points in getting medieval because Bolty had like a rapier or whatever. But... Bolt, Captain Bolty was never much of a fighter, really. But due to the nature of like how robots are in Corporea, they tend to be like they tend to be stronger. And so the quick build suggestions include a rifle, an Excalibur ranged weapon, heavy body armor. I think we'll just do that sort of thing. I might look into some uh, maybe an augment or something for his, his his hands. So I think just uh, so a rifle. You've seen the, the rifle in uh, in action. Um, in this in season four a couple times pretty pretty solid weapon so x caliber the, le- the letter x and then caliber with an um, re at the end that is a weapon that is particularly expensive it does 46 damage base range of 20 feet a rate of fire up to two reload dice d20 it's a directed energy weapon actually and so i think i think i would like to hmm, actually instead of a rifle i'd like to give him an x caliber because that's um that's energy. Because a lot of a lot of characters have rifles, really. I think I'm gonna just do that. The particularly expensive thing that's sixty five thousand dollars. I think I'm going to move on to. Uh, he could have a shield. Mm. Let's see. No, I'm gonna go into armor now. Honestly, with the whole money thing, I'm gonna play kind of loose here. I'm not gonna worry that much about um, money. Heavy body armor would... Hmm, he's kind of like part of his person, though. Well, he doesn't have great deftness anyway. He, he's kind of a nimble. Kind of a nimble one, actually. I'm going to give I'm gonna give uh, Bolty a suit weave. It only gives one defense in each of the types of damage. It makes him a little more hardy. Yeah, I think I might just do that. And where are the augments? Here we go. So one thing that looked good to me is Metamuscle. Metamuscle is an arms augment. Well, for humans, it amplifies uh, the muscle microfibers of the arms and the shoulders, providing a plus two bonus to unarmed and melee weapon damage. So I think, especially if he's going to be good at fisticuffs, I think we're going to give him a meta muscle um, augment. And I think that'll be the augment that I give him. Oh, wait, the iPhone thing, um, like the iPhone plus whatever with all the um, AR display and the, the internet searching and video and camera, that's kind of like built in anyway. It's kind of standard issue. So I'm not too worried about that. So there is that. And um, rep points. So as as I've said before, rep points stand for... Re- rep stand for really effective people promotions, REPP. I don't think Bolty would really have any rep points. If you want to participate, your starting score is equal to wit times six. Um, so Bolty has a wit score of one. So he has six rep points. So kind of a nobody, really. But that makes sense, I think. I don't think I was able to put a lot of Bolty's personality into this particular build, but I think it comes more into the role-playing aspect of it. So that, that's kind of what I also love about Corporea anyways. It's, just, it's the whole setting and interacting in the world and everything. Uh, there are a lot of things that feel generally kind of mundane, if maybe a little like beefed up a bit because it's futuristic. But it's it's interacting with the world and interacting with the forces of chaos as well. I would love to see how Bolty is kind of responds to the kind of the forces of the flux. But yeah, that's that's pretty much how you build a character in Corporea. There you have a lot of options, a lot of options regarding assets and equipment and augments. I didn't even get into like the substance augments, but that doesn't apply to Bolty. Substance augments are like drugs or steroids or whatever. That would not apply to a robot or to an android. I guess I didn't talk about what Bolty would look like. Um, if you wanted to, if I wanted to be more strict into like the corporea, in like the idea, the original idea of corporea, I'd probably make him like an android. Think maybe the android's an iRobot or something or whatever. 
like the the shiny chrome um, skin, bald head, that kind of thing, or plastic skin. However, to stay true to Captain Bolty, it would also be fun to have a kind of a short squat robot assistant kind of thing with one eye, with one eye or kind of like interface in the middle. Think of the the cores, the personality cores in the Portal video games, like Weedly or whatever. Think of that, but maybe a bit bigger with and actually able to walk around on its own. But yeah, um, that could be a lot of fun. I th- actually, you know what? I love that. I think if I were to make Bolty and if I were to play Bolty, I would have Bolty look like that. Actually, more accurately, if you've played Portal 2, there's like a, there's a co-op mode and there are these two robots. There's a shorter squat, kind of rounder robot and a taller, elongated robot. They, they both have arms and legs. I would have that shorter, squatter robot essentially be Bolty. Or... Shall, or should I say um, a C4P7-80L7Y. Anyway, I guess that's about it. Thank you very much for listening. I hope this was helpful and got you maybe a little more interested in Corporea and uh, maybe some of the expansions and things like that. Uh, there are several other characters that might be fun from previous seasons, you know, all the fantasy and, and everything that we did that might be fun to see how they would translate into here. Um, Bolty was easy, admittedly. So I might do another one of these to see how someone else, uh, another character might. I have a couple ideas in mind. So anyway, thank you very much for listening. And uh, we'll see you in the next uh, next episode. This podcast is part of the Necropodicon Network. Hey. Huh? You. Me? Yeah, you. Are you tired of watching the same multi-billion dollar films over and over again? I sure am. What if I were to tell you that there are movies out there that you have never seen before but are also entertaining? I would say that I wouldn't believe you because you're all big old fibber. Don't just sit there with your thumb up your butt. Listen to Bad Rad Movies Podcast. Warning, many of these films might not actually be entertaining. In fact, it is all subjective. If you feel like these subjective films are not to your liking, well, then listen to something else because we will not be responsible for anything that might happen to you after you have watched these films. Wow, I better go listen to the podcast right now. That sounds just like me, wow. Yeah, they'll go to the extreme, tear up libraries like vandals, light up your ears, millions of fans they will handle. Britta, or is a name celery? Too many names announced, that's for my memory. Deadly, that's a word for Scotty. For a cop, he does a lot of almost felony. Love Al Alita, showing us the way. Robert Bookkeeper getting numbers all day. If there's a problem, Poirier will solve it. Go full chaos before they revolve it. Playing guys, baby. They're cool as ass, ass, baby. Kabori a a baby On the job night and day baby Now the Kabori a is hunting For serial killers and using their cunning Nick's on point and the prisoners he's taken Set in the scene and the players he's aiding Shooting rats that are quick and nimble I go crazy and just have to giggle Talking about scat and I'm like hell no Robert and his rat I think he's gone loco Wrap up the first case real fast Space is broken and Trent's a jackass From rats to heads the story gets crazy As they meet a cruel and beautiful lady Police on the scene, you know what I mean They tortured all the perps while Robert had a toilet scene If there's a problem, Caporia will solve it Go full chaos before they resolve it Role playing guys, baby They're cool as ass, ass, baby Caporia, baby On the job, night and day, baby Playing gas, baby. They're cool as ass, ass, baby. Kapori, a, a, baby. On the job, night and day, baby. Yo, man, let's get out of here. Oh, no, the Brito! Kapori, a, baby. Kapori, a baby story. I don't 
Role playing guys, baby. They're cold. I'm so role playing guys, baby. Role playing guys, baby. Role playing guys, baby. Role playing guys, baby. They're gone. I'm so. They go. I'm so. Oh. Mm. Mm-hmm. Why aren't you listening already? Get out of here. Go download.